When we're using the sine rule to solve for the remaining sides and angles of a triangle, we sometimes have to take into account the, um, the fact that the information might be ambiguous. That is, it might define more than one triangle. Now, if we're given two angles and one side of a triangle, then there's no way the triangle can be ambiguous. There's only one possible value for the remaining angle. However, if we're given two sides and one of the opposite angles, then it can be ambiguous and we should check whether this is the case. The reason is, when we're solving with the sine rule, we generally get an equation where we've got this to solve. So we, in the previous example, we just did inverse sine and got the angle and we didn't really think any more about it. But we should. We need to check that there is another value. Um, we can understand this to be true because when we consider the sine curve, which does something like that, and so on, so it goes up to 1, down to negative 1. Um, so here we've got 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Solving this equation is the equivalent to finding the places where the line y equals k intersects this. So this would be the value for a. So your calculator will give you the principal value. However, there's also another angle which has the same sign and we call that the secondary value. You can calculate the secondary value by noting the symmetry between here and here. Okay, If that was 30 degrees between there and there, it must also be 30 degrees between there and there. So if that was 30, that would need to be 150 and so on. So when your calculator gives you a principal value, you also need to check the secondary value for the triangle and it's 180 degrees minus the principal value. Let's examine the sine rule a little closer. There was a problem which I didn't allude to in one of the other videos about it. When we're using the sine rule, it's possible that the combination of sides and angles that we're given will lead to more than one possible solution. For example, if you were to give an engineer friend of yours um, these measurements for a triangle, so A is 15, B is 10, and angle B is 35 degrees, would they be able to construct one unique triangle, or would they be able to make two separate triangles which satisfy that information? There are some mathematical conditions that you can work through before you start a problem like this, but if you're in a hurry or it's an exam, then it's probably easier just to calculate the, the missing angles and see if you can construct more than one triangle. We'll begin by making a sketch of the problem. So let's have this as the side with 15 centimetres. That makes the side opposite side A. So let's have that as 10 centimetres. So we've got side A. 10 is opposite angle B, and we'll just join the triangle like that, so that makes that angle C. Uh, this is 35 degrees in the question. So this is a rough sketch of perhaps the information we're given. We now have to calculate angle A or angle C. So using the sine rule, there's only one we can calculate at the moment, and that's angle A, because it's opposite a, a given side. So we'll try and calculate A. So writing down the sine rule for this problem, we've got sine A of a 15 equals, and we've got to use this side and this angle. So it's got to be sine 35 divided by 10. So you can rearrange that to get sine A equals 15 sine 35 over 10. And your calculator will tell you that that's approximately 0 0.8. 6. Okay, so just to be clear, we're solving the equation sine a is about 0 0.86. Right, now when we were doing previous work on trig equations, we know that when we're calculating the solution to this, our calculator will give us the principal value. Okay, so let's do that now. So let's calculate the principal value. So it's inverse sine of that. Your calculator should show you that it's about 59 degrees. Let's just work to the nearest degree. Um, that means we're given angle B, which is 35 degrees. And we can calculate angle C, 
by subtracting these two from 180. Okay, so if we do 180 minus 59 minus 35, that will give us an angle C, which is 89 degrees. So there we go. We've got one solution for this triangle. We can always do this. We can always get one solution at least. Now this value here that we calculated um, with the calculator was the principal value. But there's another one that your calculator doesn't give you. We should also check the secondary value. Okay. Now the secondary value is just 180 degrees minus the principal value as we've seen. So that means there's an alternative value for angle A. Okay. We could have had 180 minus 59 degrees. So another possible angle is 121 degrees. Okay, if you check, sine of 121 is also about 0.86. So we should check this. Our calculator could have given us this. Since we're given angle B as 35 degrees, can we calculate another angle for C? Well, the angle sum of a triangle again must be 180. So if we subtract these two from 180, we're left with C is 24 degrees. So this is another set of solutions which satisfy this information. We'll just finish off by seeing how the two sets of solutions match up to the initial sketch that we made. So this was the information given in the problem. Um, angle B is fixed at 35 degrees and the length of those two sides are also fixed. Now this seems to match up with this set of solutions here. So in this problem we worked out that that was 121 degrees and this was 21 degrees. Now the only thing which isn't fixed in this picture is the direction of that side there. We can move that within a certain limit and still be consistent with the information we're given in the question. So if you imagine extending that side up in that direction we can still have a triangle which matches the original information provided the side touches that. So keeping this as 10 centimeters, we rotate it and it will eventually match up to the triangle, uh, match up to that line up here somewhere. So that could be the new position of point A of the triangle. So we could have a second triangle where that angle there, angle C, is now 86 degrees. The new angle A works out as being 59 degrees. So we've got two possible triangles, that's why it's called the ambiguous case. In this example we're given some information about the sides of a triangle and one of the angles. We're going to try and determine whether the triangle, whether this information about the triangle is ambiguous. That means can we make two possible triangles from the given information or is it unique? Can we only make one? We're given side A is 15, side B is 8, and angle A is 40 degrees. We'll begin by making a sketch. Um, I keep saying this, but it doesn't have to be accurate. So I'm just going to draw a triangle. Um, let's call this the side with 15. This is 8. Um, that must mean this is 40 degrees. So we could label it up with the sides. So we've got A, B, and C. Now, if we're going to use the sine rule, we've got to either find angle B or C. Now, it must be angle B because we know the opposite side. We can't calculate C yet because we don't know that side. So we'll write down the sine rule to find angle B. So we write sine B over the opposite side, which is 8, is equal to, well, we use these pair here. So it's going to be sine 40 over 15, so rearrange that to get sine B, which is going to be 8 sine 40 over 15, and your calculator will tell you that that's approximately equal to about 0 0.34. Okay, now what we're going to do now is we can, obviously from this, we can get the angle B by taking the inverse sine function, so inverse sine of 0 0.34 will give you about 20 degrees. Now we already know that angle A is 40 degrees so we can use the angle sum of a triangle to calculate the remaining angle C which in this case is going to be 120 degrees so this is a very bad sketch 
Okay, that angle is 120 degrees. Let's see if we can calculate another triangle. This was the principal value. So we should try the secondary value. Okay, the secondary value is 180 degrees minus the principal value. So a second possible angle is B is 160 degrees. Now we already are given that angle A is 40 degrees and immediately we, we see that we're now up to an angle sum of 200 degrees which is impossible for a triangle. So this is crazy, we can't have that, okay? We, we can't even attempt to calculate C. So this contradiction has led us to the fact that there is only one solution for the triangle. This is a unique triangle.